And welcome, Prince of Peace members, to a very special panel discussion this year. I'm your council president. I've asked Dave Koval, L Lorain County Health Commissioner, Judy Splosky, MD, and Cynthia Streeter, MD, to join us this evening and to ask some very pointed and uh, frank questions. And they have agreed to give us some frank answers straight to the point. So why don't we get started right away? Um, thank you all to come for taking some time this evening to do this. Um, what is COVID-19? How do I know if I have it? Cindy, if somebody walked in and told you in the office, I think I have COVID-19, what, what are you looking for? So there's a whole list of um, symptoms here that you can see, um, but fever and chills, cough, body aches, shortness of breath, one very compelling symptom is loss of taste or smell. Most viruses don't do that to you, so it's very striking with COVID. Um, a lot of kids will have sore throat, congestion, runny nose, and a lot of kids will have GI symptoms or rashes, things that are a little bit different, but those are the kinds of things we look for. Okay, so what we've all been learning in the news lately is there's a vaccine um, and it's arrived. And there's a lot of questions for it. Uh, Dave, do you want to tell us uh, a little bit about, I'm sorry, not Dave, I had asked actually Judy if she would take a moment and tell us what is an mRNA vaccine? Um, mRNA is sort of a blueprint that tells our cells how to make different proteins. The vaccine is made up of mRNA from the virus, and it's telling our immune cells to make that protein and present it to other immune cells that will be involved in making the antibody. It's very selective to just making that one viral protein. It does not contain any virus. In fact, the ingredients of the vaccine are only the messenger RNA, some lipids to encase that protein and get it into the cells, some sugar and some salt. There's no preservatives, there's no egg or gluten or um, any live virus at all, which makes it a very safe vaccine. So with that in mind, should, should I even get vaccinated for COVID-19? Is it worthwhile? Absolutely. I'm very excited that this vaccine is available. I can't wait to get it myself. I strongly recommend it to friends and family. This vaccine can protect you from getting the disease. And even if you do get the disease, if you're immunized, you probably won't be as sick as if you didn't get um, the vaccine. Plus, when you take a vaccine, you protect people around you. So there's that, you know, for the greater good kind of thing with vaccines. But with that in mind, I mean, I hear so many people wondering, can I get COVID-19 from having the vaccine put into me? As I said, that there's no live virus. There's no virus at all. There's only a blueprint for making protein um, in the vaccine. So no, you cannot get COVID-19 from the vaccine. Okay, but let me give you another scenario. I had COVID-19, I recovered. Do I need to get vaccinated? So the CDC- I've already recovered, I've got the antibodies. But, but they're not long lasting. The, the CDC recommends that you get the vaccine, which really gives you long lasting antibody response. We don't know exactly when um, natural immunity wanes, but we're already seeing second cases in Europe and the United States. So they do recommend that you get another vaccine, um, that you be immunized anyway. Um, but I will tell you something, I just watched the PBS News Hour and Fauci was on there and Judy Wood Woodward asked him if, if President Donald Trump should get the vaccine. And he said that um, because Trump had monoclonal antibodies administered as treatment, he has to wait at least 90 days. So if you were sick and you were treated with monoclonal antibodies, you, you've got to wait 90 days before you're immunized. Well, what about a child under the age of 16? Can they get vaccinated? The issue with children is that none of the tests were done in children. I think eventually children will be get 
will be eligible for the vaccine, but they're not in the first group that will get that. Plus, um, they will take it by age groups. So currently, Moderna and Pfizer are both setting up vaccine trials for kids between 12 and 17 years of age. It's going to be a long time before they get to the 11 and under age group because they have to figure out accurate doses for these smaller little bodies. And so fortunately, that age group doesn't get quite as sick, but it will be a long time before they have vaccines offered them. So the next question is, is if I have an underlying medical condition, say I have had a heart, a heart condition or I have diabetes or something along those lines, is it safe to get vaccinated? So I would say if you have an underlying medical condition, it's probably more important than with anyone else for you to get vaccinated. And, and the reason is because COVID-19 really does uh, adversely affect folks with uh, underlying medical conditions. And so that's really an important piece. Uh, so far, all of the studies have shown, uh, you know, some reactions, but really nothing um, that would be a, an issue for having that underlying um, medical condition. But I'd also recommend you consult your own physician about that and, and talk to them uh, prior to getting vaccinated. Agreed. Well, is it safe to just to go along the line of uh, a natural immunity to COVID-19 rather than immunity from a vaccine? Dave, how does the public health official think on that? Yeah, so <clears throat> as Cindy mentioned, we don't know exactly how long natural immunity uh, uh, really lasts. We know about 90 days. We know it lasts that long. Uh, but we've seen it begin to wane, and then people get it again. And so uh, we, do, we do know it'll last longer. Um, you know, with the with the uh, vaccination, we don't know exactly how long. But but remember, uh, um, it's important to remember that 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 vaccination, whether you've had it already and it becomes a booster, or whether um, you get vaccinated with both doses, it's a 95% effectiveness, and that's significantly higher uh, and and should last longer. We'll know more about this as time goes on, and they continue to study the effects of this and and check for antibodies later on. And and I would add that. Um, you know, even though most people have mild illness, even some people with no risk factors can get very seriously ill. And there are a lot of people that have had these long lasting symptoms, the long haulers, that um, th this is not a benign virus. This is not influenza. So Judy, why do I have to get two shots that one? And well, I think that we sort of answered that. The studies were all done with two shots. And you get, get some protection from the first shot, but you need the booster to really give you longer lasting. So I, I compare it to um, kids and influenza vaccine. So very young children, the first year they get influenza in their life, they need two doses so that they can have that booster effect. And then from then on, um, they only need one dose. So it's very similar to that. Will the shirt, will a shot, will it hurt, will it? So, so right now we know that there have been people reporting that um, you get, you, you may have some soreness at the shot, you know, where you were actually uh, given the injection. And, and, um, and I think uh, not unlike the flu shot where you, where some people do have that soreness. Uh, and then um, your body begins to uh, produce the antibodies. And, and so you may feel run down for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and again, some people have that same reaction to the flu shot, but that's been a pretty common side effect. Um, that's really been, for, you know, most of it. There have been, you know, uh, you know scenarios where people are, are thinking, well, what's going to happen, you know, in a longer time. But so far, those side effects have been pretty mild and they've usually only last 24 to 48 hours. What about long-term or rare side effects from the vaccine? What do we know about that? Well, the vaccine hasn't really been around long enough to talk about very long-term side effects, but most side effects from vaccines happen within the first eight weeks of, of uh, receiving the vaccine. And um, all, both of these studies waited at least two months before they even applied for um, the emergency um, authorization. And so we have that information and it looks as if there are not um, long-term side effects. Rare side effects, you know, 60, 70,000 people have been um, included in these studies. So maybe 30,000 plus have been immunized and um, we have not seen rare side effects, but 
I want to reassure you, by the time this vaccine becomes available to the general population, 21 million healthcare providers will receive this vaccine. And if there are rare side effects, we're going to have them, we'll know. So, um, you know, they have an eye on that. I would also like to add that the selectivity of the antibodies uh, just to the uh, spike protein of the COVID virus um, probably makes it more or less likely to have long-term or rare side effects than having the disease itself. So how do I know if the COVID-19 vaccine is safe? So let me start with a little bit of um, uh, operation warp speed. So let's be honest, that's probably not the smartest thing to call a uh, vaccine effort when you're trying to make people feel confident in the safety of it. So what Operation Warp Speed really did though was a really good thing in terms of um, uh, putting money up front so that multiple companies could take the risk of trying to create a vaccine. Because what happens in a lot of times is uh, companies don't wanna take that risk because if the vaccine doesn't work out, they end up having to throw out all the vaccine and it's a large investment. The, the government decided to take that burden away and allow multiple vaccines to move. And then, you know, it, some of them have not worked out. There were multiple companies and, you know, 30 or 40 different vaccines that had gotten, you know, pretty far. And, and again, the government kind of said, you know what, it, we don't mind if we throw it away as long as we get to a good vaccine at some point. And so that was really the, op, the idea. Uh, but again, that name kind of made it feel like, oh, well, we're skipping all of these uh, trials and we're going we're gonna to just rush it to production. And that really wasn't the case. And so I'll let uh, Judy or Cindy kind of uh, address, you know, how many people were in the studies and, and, and how thorough the studies were uh, uh, to make sure it's safe. There were almost 30,000 in each uh, study, the Pfizer and the Moderna. And, um, the vaccines were 95% effective and very few side effects were noted uh, that were different between the placebo group and the vaccine group. And so I think that should be very reassuring that it's safe. So in the event that I do get the vaccine and there's, and there's a problem or a, a, a bad reaction, how do I report it? Is there a way to report it? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, um, uh, there's been tracking of vaccines for long, as long as vaccines have been around in terms of uh, bad reactions or things like that. And there's been a system out there for a long time to do that. And in this case, they even have another layer of that. And, and so at every vaccine site, wherever you get your vaccine, you'll get information on how you can actually report um, to uh, back to the CDC to kind of track these kind of diseases. And so every time you go, uh, wherever you end up getting your vaccination, you will get that information that you can, you can do to make sure that uh, they can track those. Super. So Dave, we see these kind of slides or, or ads around, or there's, there's multiple phases to this, how we're gonna roll it out and get this into the communities, et cetera. Break it down for us. What is this really telling me? What's the time period? Okay, so uh, there's really good news. There's really a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I think you've heard all three of us talk about, we're excited about the fact that there's a really good vaccine. Uh, so remember this, for the next few months, we're gonna be in phase one. So between now and April 1st is the target to take care of all phase one people. And that is medical workers, that is um, high risk folks, 65 and over with an underlying condition, that's uh, EMTs, long-term care facilities, all of those really high risk uh, scenarios. And so that's targeted to be done by April 1st. Vaccine dependent, of course, but it looks like they're producing enough vaccine that that, that could very well happen. Then we'll move into phase two and then phase three and four. And when we start to do that from April till probably June, uh, we'll be doing mass vaccination of a variety of different groups in both what's called a closed pod and an open pod. A closed pod might be we come out to a place of business, uh, hospitals, you know, uh, vaccinating their own people, that's, that's considered a closed pod. And then uh, we'll have also mass vaccination. So the general public, the 40 year old person with no underlying condition that, you know, it has a relatively mild scenario if they do get COVID, 
they actually will all have an opportunity to get vaccinated at that point. And, uh, and then sometime, the target again is June, but you know, again, that could be anywhere from late May to, to July or whenever that turns out to be. That's when we'll have enough people in the population to be vaccinated that we get what, the, what many people have talked about, which is herd immunity, to really you know, put an end to this virus to some degree. Uh, so that's kind of the long, that's the time frame. I think uh, from late spring to early summer, we'll begin to see a lot of things um, lighten up. I would say the one thing that everyone has to keep in mind, we've got to get through Christmas. We've got to get through January and February and March. And let's face it, here in Northeast Ohio, not the nicest months. But we really knew we need to just hang in there a little longer and wear a mask, stay six feet apart, wash your hands, uh, and really stay home if you're sick. And if we can do that, when we, once we get a lot of people vaccinated, things can get a little bit more back to normal. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. I want to get some final thoughts from our panelists. Um, I'm going to start you off with a question, and then let you give uh, the final thoughts. Um, when do I get rid of the mask? It won't be right away. Okay. So um, I can address that because I think that um, we're not really sure. The vaccine trials looked at um, symptoms, not really whether you still had virus that you could spread to other people. And this will come out in the long term and we'll have a better idea. But right now, even if you get vaccinated, you still need to wear a mask, perhaps to protect other people. And again, we don't know how long the antibodies will last. We won't know that for a while. So even maybe to protect yourself. Um, my, so I think we're, we still need to um, continue with our protocols to wear a mask and, and isolate and be cautious. And my um, other thoughts about this vaccine, I had a lot of doubts at the beginning because it was, there was not a lot known about the vaccine. So I did a lot of extra research. I looked at the FDA findings um, and the studies and learned much more about the messenger RNA vaccine. And I really feel very comfortable getting this vaccine now and I really can't wait to have that kind of protection. And I think we're very fortunate that these vaccines came out, this, the special mess uh, messenger RNA vaccine um, at this time to help us through this pandemic. Thanks, Judy. Cindy, any final thoughts? So I want to just drill down a little bit on um, vaccine allergy response. There were two nurses in Great Britain that had a pretty serious allergic reaction following the vaccine. And I have a good friend who has um, some food allergies and and um, antibiotic allergy. And she texted me this morning, do I have to worry about taking this vaccine? And I'll just kind of build on what Judy said. There's no proteins in this vaccine. So there's no egg, there's no food product. This is, um, uh, mRNA does not need to grow. So there's no preservatives needed in that vaccine. And there's no antibiotics in this vaccine. And following this uh, reaction in, in um, Great Britain, CDC did say, that even if you have um, severe food allergies, antibiotic allergies, environmental allergies, you can still receive this vaccine. Thanks, Cindy. Dave, any final comments, thoughts as we move forward? Yeah, so, you know, we are talking to the church, right? So let's talk about helping our neighbor, right? We, you know, throughout this, anybody who's heard me speak has been talking, uh, I've been concentrating a lot on helping our neighbor. Wear your mask to help your neighbor, keep six foot apart to help your neighbor, wash your hands to keep up to keep helping your neighbor. These are all important things and we need to keep doing them for a little while longer. And I know we're all tired. We're all tired. I'm certainly tired being in public health and I'm, I'm sure anybody in the medical field is also tired. We got a little ways to go, but we can make it through. Just keep going a little longer and then do the last thing to help your neighbor regarding COVID-19 and that is get vaccinated. Because not only are you protecting yourself, but you're protecting the whole community. And, you know, that's what we want. We all want to come back to Prince of Peace and hug each other. Well, we need to get vaccinated and we need to get this thing under control before we can do that. So hang in there and, uh, and we can all come together. And hopefully, 
you know, Easter will have a new meaning for us. And as we move further than from Easter, we'll really, um, we'll really be able to get this thing under control. So hang in there. Dave, Judy, Cindy, thank you for your time. Very welcome. Uh, this has been very insightful. Um, and Dave, as your point is, let's, let's all look towards Easter because we should be seeing some great changes by then, including a new pastor at Prince of Peace. Um, looking forward to getting to know him uh, even more. Thank you. So with that, uh, we thank all of you for, for tuning in and hopefully this has been helpful for everyone. Thank you.